Hey, what's up? It's Seb from Workbench, and this week we're going to take a look at creating a cartoon wave in Cinema 4D. This week we're going to take a look at creating this water effect. It's highly inspired by this video from Everfresh. If you haven't seen his stuff, he's got some great little shorts. You should definitely go check his stuff out. I'll leave a link in the description. So let's take a look at how this thing is built. Now I'm just using a small chunk of this, but at the end I ended up cloning it out a little bit just to give myself a little more wave. But to start off with, I created a plane and that's 400 by 1000, 50 segments on the width and 1000 segments on the Z. And then this is the basic setup here. They're just, um, displacers. Uh, I have an overall displacer, which just gives you that little bit, of, little bit of noise, and it's actually built with noise. So I go into shading here. I'm just using noise as the noise. It sounds super redundant, and I don't have any speed or anything on this one. And since this one is overall, you can see that I'm not using any fall off. So next I created this main wave. So how this one works is I'm using a linear field, but I'm using a linear field like you would use a box or a sphere or something where it has a fall off on both ends. And how I did that was I went in here in the linear field and I went into remapping and I remapped it uh, using a spline contour and it looks like this. So if we look at the wave from the side, you can see it matches our shape. The thing about that though is it creates a very uniform top to this thing. So I wanted to vary that a little more. So I added another wave on top of that one. And this one is a different linear field, slightly changing this shape. But I'm also in the shading, I'm adding a noise. Whereas in the main wave, I just am using a color. So the effect is dependent on where the field is. So the effect is either 100% or zero, depending on where the field is. Whereas this one has variation to where that effect is so it's, it goes in conjunction with the linear field. So let me turn that guy on. And you can see it adds a lot of variation to the top of the wave. So now you see we have two linear fields running together here. And they're just grouped together here. So to create the foam, I chose to do it with splines. Pretty simple splines. It's just a sh straight line, really. And then I'm using a displacer on that. Let me take you into how the spline is built. So if you look at the spline here, it's just a Bezier spline. It's got five points in it. And then I have it set to uniform and I have 30 points on it. So it's adding points between each point on the line. And then in my displacer here, I'm using shading and I'm just using a noise. And then for the fall offs here, I'm using a linear field, which is the same linear field that's creating our wave and then a point object. I'm gonna hide the plane so we can actually see what's going on here. So with this technique, I'm using a free plugin from Nitro 4D, and that's this magic projector. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description below. But what that does is it's taking a spline and projecting it on top of a surface, and I'm pointing it at my plane, which is the water surface here. So I should note that instead of using the spline and the plugin, you can also use a selection tag and a field to do the same thing and then do your cloner on top of that. And then I have all of this grouped inside of my linear field. So I'm only animating the linear field across, but you can see it moves with the surface. As it comes up here, you can see the projection going up with the wave and just animating across. So then the last part of this is I'm using these splines to control two cloners. And these splines are pretty much the same. They're just slightly offset of each other. So they're hitting a different part of the wave. And I changed the noise a little bit so that they're animated differently. Oh, I should note that the noise in the displacer is set to world space so that when it moves across the surface, it's actually animating. Okay, so let me show you how these cloners work. So the cloner is a pretty basic cloner. There's nothing really fancy here. It's just a cloner with a sphere in it and I'm cloning it 500 times on the spline itself. So as the spline moves, it animates up and down. And then I'm adding to the 
cloner, I'm adding an effector and it's just a random effector. And that random effector, what it's doing it's right here, I'm just doing a little bit of a little bit of position variation and a scale variation. So this is what that looks like. And then I'm going to turn on the other one. And the other one is exactly the same setup. So you have these two cloner things. And then I'm taking both of these and I'm putting them in a volume builder to make this. And then when I mesh it, it looks like that. All right, so we have our base setup. Now let me show you how we texture map this. I'm going to turn all this stuff back on so you can actually see the wave. For the foam here, I'm using a texture map in luminance only. And I'm just using the Sketch and Tune cell shader. So if I go in the cell here, I just have it set to diffuse and I have it set to white and blue. That's it. But look at that on here, what that looks like. So there's our foam there. And for the wave, it's also pretty simple. Again, I'm using luminance because I didn't want it to be affected by light because it's trying to be a tune look to it. And in here, I have it set to layer. And how I have this is I have a base color and then I'm using a noise in the add mode. So it's just adding the white to the blue. And in here, we're using Stupel 1.8 on octaves. I'm using UV 2D, have it set to 100%. And then on relative scale, I have it set to 50 and then 500, giving you those nice, long sense of moving water. And then I'm animating the movement. So that's it. It's pretty simple. All right. Well, that's it for this week. Give this technique a shot. There's a lot of different things you can do with it. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. And if you'd like to help support what we do, go to workbench.tv forward slash support. And while you're there, check out the blog. I'm Sev, and we will catch you later.